Scarlet or Blade. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Silent Night, Memoirs of a Royal Guard, Chapter 45. From the desk of Sergeant Iridescence, Active Unit Sergeant, Princess Sunna's House Guard. Silent Knight was putting up a valiant but losing fight in the door to the train car. He was determined that the Griffins were going to have no chance of reaching us. His words echoed in my mind. No heroes today, sir. Stupid, stupid pony. The gap between the cars was growing swiftly as it slowed and ours sped up. He kept stealing brief glances over his shoulder and when it became clear that no Griffin could possibly reach us here, just went down. The griffins immediately pounced on him. Their heavy forms blocked any chance of seeing him, and I screamed. I didn't mean to, but I did. Every pony had stopped to look at me. That was it. He was gone. Behind me, I heard her hooves galloping down the car. I turned to look just as pearl-coated unicorn leapt over me and off the train. She sailed forward, her wings of light and silver magic shimmered around her, from until she suddenly disappeared. Down the track I saw her pop into existence in the other car. Her sudden arrival sent Griffins tumbling about, leaving her standing over Silent Knight's body. She looped her hooves around his unmoving form, and her horn illuminated once again. There was a crackle of air and a soft pop. The air appeared beside me, and she eased him onto the floor. He's badly injured, she said, with a plain coolness that unsettled me. Silent Knight's sword lay clutched in his mouth, both bloodied. He didn't move or make any sound. Magic flared on Farrell's horn and she gingerly touched him. He is stable, but his magic is at its limits. I must rest. Without another word, she walked away to an empty seat, collapsed into it, and promptly fell asleep. The rest of the squad came over to stare down at where Silent Knight rested. Miley, get the bandaged. Be careful, I said firmly. The others were in shock, and I stamped my hoof. Listen up. We're not out of this yet. We don't know what is waiting for us if, we, if they've given up. There's no time to feel sorry for ourselves. I need every uninjured pony on watch now. They jumped to attention, and I continued. Thunder tumble. Give me a head count. Orchid. You're in charge of making sure the train moves as fast as possible, Miley. When you're done with the first sergeant, tend to the others. Get moving. Training and instinct took over, and the ponies started on their tasks I set them to. I went to where the temple guards were. You... I pointed at the first back of the train. If the griffins get anywhere close, I want the gravity spell. Can you do that? Yes, he said. Get to it. You... I pointed to the second. Take care of the exemplar. Make sure she hasn't overdone it. Check her for injuries, too. Right away, she said before hurrying off. The final one I put a hoof on. You got to Silent Night. It is extremely important that he lives. I know you have healing skills other than magic. You can tend to his wounds. Help Miley. He nodded and hurried off. I jumped onto the other benches where I knew every pony could see. Good work, every pony. When it all fell apart, you did your jobs. Every pony here did exactly what was expected of them. But we're not done. We have to get Princess Luna to the ships. We have no idea how deep this goes, and we won't be stopping at the palace. Do whatever you need to do to get right in the head, but do it quick. By sundown, we'll be at the port. Be ready. I made the call. Right or wrong, I made it. Before the train reached the city, we stepped or stopped it and bailed out. With our wounded across our backs, we made for the port. By the time the train pulled into the station, we would be on the ships and setting sail. We let the Duke sort out who was guilty. Luna had been strangely silent. She did not argue with me. She simply did as she was told and followed along with plans I made to get us all out of the Celestia forsaken continent. Silent Night groaned on my back. He was heavier than I had estimated, but I just had to be the one to say I'd carry him. In hindsight, I shouldn't have done that. It is hard to command from under a heavy Pegasus stallion, but the thought of him being injured and stuck on any pony else was more than I could bear. 
The head count had not been as bad as I had estimated, at least if you didn't consider Duke Cassius as Griffins. We had three missing. None confirmed dead, but in my heart I didn't believe missing any more than any pony else. The palace guards had fared worse. They had six missing, and one poor pony didn't survive the train ride. Silent Knight was in bad shape, and Russet Rook was in a lot of pain. Rook would occasionally be lucid enough to be useful, but we still had to carry him. Getting to the port was not difficult. The city guard was unconcerned, uninterested, and were uninclined to stop us. We reached the ships without any trouble and got loaded up. I dumped Silent Knight into one of the bunks harder than I had intended, and he groaned. You have to hold on a little longer. Please, I can't do this alone. I whisper before heading back up on deck and to look at every pony else. Cast off immediately, I shouted the captain. He nodded and set his ponies to it. Within half an hour, we were underway and facing a long voyage across the sea. A very, very long voyage. I've, I've killed him, I said meekly to Russell, or Lieutenant Rook. He was up and on the mend. He still had a horrible limp, but thankfully he had resumed command. Iridescence, you made the best call you could in the high-intensity situation. It is the same call I would have made. More importantly, it is the same call that Silent Knight would have made. I set my hooves on the rail of the ship. He's going to die. If we stayed in the Griffin capital, we could have gotten him to a doctor. They could have helped. Rook reached a hoof out and pulled my face towards his. Your duty was to protect the princess, and that is exactly what you did. Don't dishonor Silent Knight by second-guessing yourself, Iridescence. He is injured because he chose to sacrifice himself for that duty. If you had risked the princess to save him, you would have sullied that sacrifice. He let me go and continued, It is ugly to say, but soldiers die. That is what we do. Silent Knight knew, knows that better than any pony. It is the harsh reality that we rarely want to face. Honestly, ponies like him and I, this is always how it goes. There is no happy ending. We just try to make it count when it is our time. What he did counted. Don't cheapen it. That, that's horrible. How can you be so callous? I demanded. Violence is horrible. War is horrible. There are the... They are the antithesis of rationality. Every pony lost is a tragedy, but that is exactly why Silent Knight and I do what we do. We go willingly so that the average pony will never see this part of life. We die so that others may live. I have no delusion that I won't end up on the exact same way. If it wasn't for him, I would have. When it was my turn, I hope no poor pony will feel guilty." Lieutenant Rook drew himself up to his full height. If he dies, he dies. It won't be your fault. The only ones to blame are the cowards that ambushed us. Silent Knight made his choice, and now it is time for you to make yours. Are you going to wallow in guilt, or make it worthwhile? What will it be, Sergeant? Tears for my friend threatened to fall, but I willed them away. My heart broke as I did, but I drew myself to attention. Duty, sir. The lieutenant nodded and said, You're acting unit sergeant, then. Pick an acting sergeant for your squad. Yes, sir. I said quietly, and I turned to go to my duty. How is he? I asked. Luna was lying across the head of the bed with silent eye propped against it. She had graciously given her more comfortable quarters to him. He needs more medical attention than we can provide, Exemplar Pharaoh replied. The unicorn priestess had been tending Silent Knight carefully, but she would not look directly at Luna to speak to her. It made for a somewhat strange situation, since the princess had been unwilling to leave her favored guard. The pair merely tended him and did not mingle. Will he make it? I asked hopefully. Luna replied, he is in great pain. I fear there are internal wounds we cannot readily see. Exemplar Pharaoh responded in her normal, emotionless way. He will make the journey home. Once there, I cannot say. 
How can you be so certain? I asked. I have faith in the alicorns. She said plainly without looking away from the bandage she was replacing. I looked at Luna, who simply shrugged, then back to the priestess. I'll take that as good news. Then, let me know if anything changes, please. Of course, Sergeant, Farrell said. Leaving the strange pair to care for Silent Night, I went back to the deck to pray for strong winds. Just a few more days, and we would be in Equestria. Then we could get him to the finest hospital around. Baltimore in sight, Captain! called one of the sailors in the crow's nest. Lieutenant Rook limped up and shouted, I want all the wounded in stretchers immediately. Incognito, fly to the shore as fast as you can. We need medics ready to receive us. Yes, sir, Cog shouted. He was already in the air, speeding towards shore. I hurried down to Luna's quarters. We're here, I blurted nervously. We need to get him to a stretcher. Luna nodded and gently laid Silent Night fully onto the bed. He didn't groan or move. He was just limp and pale. His breathing was shallow, too. Solar Flare and Astro Bolt arrived to take him. They went to move Silent Night, but Luna blocked them. Gently, she levitated his form with her magic and nestled him onto the stretcher. She fixed him with a stern gaze. Thou wilt not, or thou wilt be most gentle with him. Quietly, they nodded, took their positions, and lifted Silent Night to move up onto the deck. I followed behind them, unable to take any eyes off of him. I was worried that if I did, he'd depart. The exemplar Pharaoh stood with the wounded staring vacantly off into space. When Solar and Astral set Silent Night down, she seemed to snap back to reality. Immediately, she went to him, and her horn flared into silver light. She touched it to his forehead, and then dispassionately said, He does not have long. Every pony on deck stopped what they were doing and turned. The ship slowly pulled into port, and the sound of sirens became obvious. I willed my hooves to carry me to the stretcher. Silent Night had stopped moving. My head fell and I nuzzled his cheek. It was cold. I whispered softly, Just fight a little longer. Please, just a little longer. Lieutenant Rook found a voice and he called sternly, The ramp is coming up. Stretch your carriers to your post. Get the first sergeant down into the nearest ambulance. Move it, ponies. It snapped them out of their grief and they went back to their duties. I didn't. My hind hooves gave out and I just sat there as they carried him away. Well, then I hope you guys have had a wunderbar day.